Now let's consider the importance of structural thinking when it comes to solving the sustainability problem. This is critical because this is what's known as a complex system problem. This type of problem requires structural thinking. Let's see why this is so. There are three main levels of maturity when it comes to cause and effect analysis. If we don't know for sure what causes what, then we can only guess at the solution. Therefore, cause and effect analysis is required. The more difficult the problem, the higher level of analysis required. The first level of maturity is event-oriented thinking. This explains everything with a causal chain of events such as A causes B and B causes C. The root cause is the events that start the chain. There might even be two events, such as two butterflies causing a hurricane somewhere. The idea is that if you fix the root cause, the problem is solved. The drawback to this type of thinking is there is no underlying structure which can provide an overall pattern. There's only a confused jumble of events. Event-oriented thinking works fine on normal everyday problems, but it fails miserably on difficult problems. The reason is event-oriented thinking, like we said, offers no pattern and no structure to guide the problem solver towards what matters. Moving on up the scale of maturity, the next level is systems thinking. The popular definition of systems thinking, or holistic thinking, is thinking of the system as a whole instead of the parts. Everything affects everything else. But this is not enough. It's too loose. It's too loose because it doesn't say what's important and what's not. All you can do with the popular notion of systems thinking is run around the whole system looking for elements that may or may not help to solve the problem. What is still missing is guidance on what to analyze in depth. But now let's consider a few events. Draw them right in here. Okay, and a few more. And this one affects that one, but also this one, and also that one. And then, of course, C affects E. E, in turn, affects C, as well as D. And it sometimes affects B. And then C affects F and G. And then G affects F. F affects A, etc., etc. And then if you try to tack on anything, well, pretty soon what you've got is an indecipherable mess. You've got to keep track of all the relationships because everything affects everything else. But as you can see, it becomes a bird's nest of confusion. There is no clear guidance on where to go to dig deeper to solve a problem. Systems thinking is better than event-oriented thinking because you try to think of the system as a whole but it's still lacking in structure and guidance. This shortcoming is fixed in the third level of maturity, which is structural thinking. Structural thinking sees the world as a complex structure of nodes, relationships, and feedback loops. Once a problem structure is understood, how to solve it becomes an order of magnitude easier because you can see where the high leverage points are. Pushing on these points causes a predictable response. In structural thinking, you want to say, I want to understand a particular force in the system. Such as, say, the force of a hurricane. Event A might be the sun shining on the ocean somewhere. It might cause event B, which is a thermal. 
This in turn might cause event C, that is, cause the air to start spinning, which could cause event D, and that is the beginning of a hurricane. This in turn increases the thermal, which makes the loop grow and grow. It goes around and around. That's where the force of a hurricane comes from. Now we're starting to understand something. The beauty of modeling like this is you now have structure. You now have a clear pattern. You don't have a bird's nest. And you don't have a simplistic jumble of relationships. Feedback loops are where it's at for understanding dynamic systems, whether they are human or natural. Now, when we tack on things, let's start tacking them on, we don't really have much of a problem. For example, a hurricane might cause a company to go out of business because oh, it was issuing insurance policies where uh, it shouldn't have. It's just too hurricane prone. Let's call this force two. Force number one and force number two, well, this diagram shows exactly how they work. Anyone can understand it. You really can't go to these other ways of thinking and get this level of understanding. That's what makes structured thinking so powerful. In addition, it's real easy to look very closely at your structure and say, oh my gosh, look at this force over here. Excuse me, look at this node over here. That is a high leverage point. If we can figure out how to push there, well, that would automatically start pushing here, which would start pushing here, which would activate the main loop, and then C affects E, so that would activate the side loop, and that would actually increase the effect of our pushing, and so on. Now that is where structural thinking can lead, and that is where we need to go if we're going to solve the sustainability problem.